With the large amount of 3D printers available on the market, it can be pretty overwhelming for someone looking to get their first 3D printer, or even for somebody that has a 3D printer or multiple that want to add another machine to their lineup. And the reason why it is this way, and I don't really foresee this changing anytime soon, is because with 3D printers especially, it's not a one shoe fits all. Depending on your specific requirements and needs for things like build size, things like features and functionality, do you need it to be dual extrusion, and your material requirements will all play a key role in deciding which 3D printer is going to the be, uh, be the best for your specific needs. Now, of course, with a little bit of knowledge and patience, just about every part on a 3D printer can be upgraded, but there are a lot of people that want to have as many of their wants and needs checked off out of the box without having to do a day one upgrade. Now, although all the parts that make up a 3D printer are very important, the extruder, in my opinion, is one of the most important. The main reason for that is that the extruder plays the very crucial role of making sure that the filament is being consistently and reliably extruded into your hot end. If you don't have a good extruder and you have things like skipped steps or under extrusion, then your parts are one, not gonna look good, but also won't be very functional because they won't be as, as strong as they should be if the extruder was doing its job well. And although there are a few variations of these two, the main two types of extruder systems are the Bowden type extruder and the direct drive extruder. Now over the last few years, I've seen arguments for both the Bowden and the direct drive extruder system. So in today's video, we're going to talk about both of these systems. I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons, what my overall experience has been, and we are going to try to shed some light on this topic, as well as hopefully bring up some discussion as to whether this even matters for your specific applications. For me, this is a pretty fun topic that I've had conversations about quite a few times over the years. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Since my audience does vary greatly from those looking to get their first 3D printer to those that have been printing for years, I did want to take at least a brief moment to go over these two extrusion systems. Starting off, let's take a look at the Bowden type extrusion system. I would argue that as of today, that is the most common style that you'll find out there. Almost all Creality machines have them as well as a wide range of other 3D printers. With the Bowden style extrusion system, the extruder is mounted somewhere off to the side of the frame of the printer and there is a Bowden tube that goes from the extruder to your hot end. Now, depending on whether your hot end is all metal or not all metal, the Bowden tube will go to the top of the hot end or if it's not all metal, the Bowden tube will actually feed all the way through the heat sink and almost to the nozzle of your hot end. This Bowden tube is typically kept in place by a push fit PTFE connector and you have some small clips that will ensure or hopefully ensure that the Bowden tube does not pop out. Next, we have direct drive. And unlike the Bowden system, the extruder is not mounted off to the side. It's actually mounted onto your hot end or your X carriage. A lot of times it's actually mounted directly to your hot end, but there are some cases where there is a small little PTFE guide tube that goes between the extruder and the hot end that's right underneath it. As far as this system goes, there's not really much more to say about it because it is a very simple system and direct as the name implies. Back in 2014, when I got my first 3D printer, which was the XYZ DaVinci 1.0, it came with what would be known as a direct drive extruder. Now back then, me being new to 3D printing, I had no idea that it was a direct drive extruder. And honestly, the conversation, there wasn't nearly as much conversation going on. And I didn't even hear the term Bowden tube for quite a few years or Bowden type extruder for quite a few years after getting into this technology. The second machine that I got was a Fulger Tech i3 2020 kit, which also came with a direct drive extruder. And the machine after that, I believe I got was the ANET A8, which most people are familiar with. If it's not because of its uh, kind of become a meme in the community or just that a lot of people know it as being kind of one of the cheaper 3D printers that you could get for quite a long time, that also came with a direct drive extruder. So as I mentioned, I hadn't heard the term Bowden type extruder for quite a few years when I first got into 3D printing. And I don't think it was until 2016, maybe even 2017, where I first started to see the term Bowden extruder popping up. And just like many of you guys that are doing research by watching this video, I did the exact same thing. I went online and I started to research what this Bowden type extruder was all about. Now, the large appeal that I saw online was that with the Bowden type extruder, people were claiming that you can print faster and cleaner which actually made a whole lot of sense to me because the NEMA 17 motor, which does create quite a bit of additional weight, I think I looked and it said that they can vary between 250 to 300 grams for most standard NEMA 17 motors, but taking that weight off of the actual head of the printer or the uh, hot end assembly and moving that off to the side would free up the hot end to be able to whip back and forth very quickly and not have to worry about any sort of 
uh, drag or skipping because of that added mass caused by the NEMA 17 motor. And it felt like overnight the Bowden type extrusion system exploded and most all of the 3D printers that I've tested out or reviewed on this channel have come with a Bowden type extrusion system. Now, not all of them, but if I had to do a split, I would say at least 80% of the machines that I've tested out come stock with a Bowden extrusion system. Even with the Bowden type extruder taking over, it seems that there has been a lot of diehard direct drive extruder fans out there that I have seen raving about how much better or how much more they enjoy using a direct drive system. And over the years, I've used both. Before making this video, I kind of looked around to get an idea of what I'm running and it's a pretty even split. I've got about half of my machines running a Bowden setup and the other half running a direct drive system. Now, before I get further into this, I'm just going to come out and say that over the last six years of 3D printing, there have been very few times where it has mattered whether I've printed on a Bowden or a direct drive extruder. In most instances to me, it really doesn't make any difference. And the print quality that both a Bowden or a direct drive extruder can create or produce is fantastic. Now, with that being said, just like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am just one person and with 3D printing, it is not a one shoe fits all. So although that's been the case for me, that might not be the case for you depending on whatever specific needs that you have. With that being said, I'm going to cover the pros and cons of the things that I have seen for both of these systems, again, to hopefully better shed some light on which one you might want to go with. Now for the Bowden type system, like I mentioned, really one of the biggest attractions to it is having less weight on your hot end assembly, allowing you to whip that head back and forth as quickly as possible. So if you are looking to create a speed demon of a 3D printer, or if that's your goal, then that might be something that you want. For myself personally, I've never really been one to push my 3D printers as far as speed goes. I print very conservatively at an average of around 60 millimeters a second, which is by no means very quick. In my instance, or in my experience, even when I was running a 3D print farm, I found it better to actually swap out a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for a 0.6 millimeter nozzle for those times that I wanted to decrease the print speed and produce still a really good quality part and cut down on some time. So that also could be something to consider that Yes, going quicker certainly will cut down your print time, but going from a 0.4 to a 0.6, if that will work for your certain parts tolerances, can really cut down on the print time. One other pro of going with a Bowden type extrusion system is if you want to upgrade that Bowden type extrusion system. So for example, on a Creality 3D printer, they come with, most of them, come with this really simple, cheap plastic extruder. Well, over on Chuck's Filament Friday 3D printing channel, which I can link you guys to, one of his favorite upgrades that he's done is swapping out that uh, extruder for a CME CNC EZR extruder. And because the extruder is mounted off to the side, it is really easy to just undo that extruder and swap in a different one, whether you wanna go with the EZR like Chuck uses, or a Bontech, or whatever other extruder type that you want, it's super simple to upgrade. While on a direct drive system, if you want to upgrade the extruder, since it's normally on the hot end assembly, there could be a lot more things involved, more parts need to be removed, more things that you need to think of. So again, the ease of upgrading a Bowden type extruder also can be a pro for some. One of the trade-offs for using a Bowden style extruder is that you will likely spend a bit more time dialing in things like retraction. On a direct drive system, since the filament has a very short path to travel, retraction is very simple and usually the filament just needs to retract a short distance as it's printing. While with a Bowden, since it's pushing it all the way through this PTFE tube and through the hot end, it normally takes a bit more time to dial in the retraction settings, especially when we're working with materials like PTG or nylon or any of the materials that are more prone to stringiness. One of the other things with Bowden type extruders is that printing with certain materials can prove to be a bit more difficult, especially flexible filaments. Now, that doesn't mean that Bowden extruders can't print with flexible filaments because I've done it and many people have done it, but typically you're going to be printing quite a bit slower and you also won't be able to print with the wide spectrum of flexible filaments that are out there. Like you might be able to get away with 95A shore hardness or 90A or maybe even 85A, but if you're printing with materials like NinjaFlex or you're printing with, there's another, um, there's another filament out there that's even softer than NinjaFlex, you're not gonna be able to get away with it on the Bowden style extruder or you'll be printing so slow and be dealing with clogs that it's just not worth your time. So. Again, if you're not someone that really cares about 3D printing with flexible filaments, then this is a non-issue for you. But if you are, it's certainly something to consider that it's a lot more difficult and you'll be printing a lot slower. The final thing I did want to mention about Bowden style extruders is that this is less of an issue of the uh, extrusion system and more of a not using quality components. But I've seen multiple times where the 
press fit or the PTFE push fittings that hold the Bowden tube in place actually pop off. Like they don't do a good enough job of gripping the Bowden tube. Maybe they get worn down, maybe they're just cheap, whatever. But I've seen quite a few times where someone's printing and they're running a long print and the Bowden tube pops out on one end. Usually it's the end that it's connected to the extruder. And once that happens, you will have a mess of filament and your part is going to fail unless you instantly catch it. It's basically just going to push the filament out of the extruder and it's not gonna go through the hot end. So this isn't something, I mean, I could probably count on one hand the amount of times over the years that this has actually happened to me, but I have seen it happen to others as well. So it is something that I think is at least worth mentioning. With direct drive extruders, that added weight to the hot end assembly is not going to do you any favors as far as speed goes. However, with that being said, because of the fact that it has such a short path for the filament to travel and you've got extruders that have things like three to one gear ratios, a lot of times on these direct drive uh, extruder systems, you can actually get away with a thinner stepper motor than the kind of standard full-size NEMA 17 stepper motor. So although you might still have added weight in comparison to a Bowden setup, you can at least bring that weight down by going with either like a pancake stepper motor or just again, a thinner stepper motor than the full-size NEMA 17 that a lot of times the default extruders come with on these 3D printers. Things like retraction are much easier to dial in because in most instances, it's just a very short distance and the retraction speed can be quite high. And the ability to print with materials that are flexible, I've printed on the Micro Swiss direct drive um, extruder and the Omnia Drop direct drive extruder flexible filaments at pretty high speeds with minimal issues. So uh, again, if you're looking to print with those flexible materials, then the Bowden system really isn't going to be a faster solution. Other than the added weight caused by this system, the only real negative I can think of, again, which I mentioned a moment ago, is in terms of if you want to upgrade the extruder. Because the extruder is mounted with the hot end, it's just a bit more of a process. And normally you're going to be replacing the whole back bracket or the back carriage that the actual hot end is mounted to. And you'll have to take into consideration things like fans and just all the components that are on the hot end assembly. While on a Bowden type setup, if you just want to upgrade the extruder, there's a lot less things that you need to consider. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, and as I've discussed on this channel many times in the past, in the six years I've been 3D printing, the main materials I print with are PLA, PETG, ABS, and some occasional flexibles. Yes, we've, we've kind of branched out from that, and we've been experimenting with a lot of other uh, filaments, one for my own knowledge and two to share with you guys, so that way you know how to print with these, but those materials can print perfectly fine on both the Bowden or direct drive. So the PLA, PTG, and ABS, and again, the occasional flexible, it, even on a Bowden type setup is not a huge deal. So for me, there's been maybe a couple of times where I wanted to print with like Ninja Flex and I just couldn't get it to work correctly or reliably enough on a Bowden type system. But with that being said, if I did have to put my vote in, I would say I lean a little bit more towards the direct drive side, just knowing that that I can throw any filament at it and not have to think about, oh man, this filament's too flexible, like it's gonna be problematic. It just, I like having the kind of like, this can take whatever I throw at it. So for me, again, I do um, lean a bit more on the direct drive extruder type over the Bowden type system. Also, I do really like that the filament path is so short on the direct drive system. I mean, on a Bowden type, it can be a foot, a foot and a half, I mean, even two feet, even more in some instances that the filament has to travel before exiting the hot end. While on a direct drive system, uh, looking over at the micro Swiss, I mean, we're talking, there's probably two inch or maybe three inches or so between where the filament enters and exits. And I do feel like on direct drives, I seem to run into less uh, issues with things like clogging and jamming because it is such a narrow path. And personally for myself, because I am no speed demon with 3D printing and I'm printing conservatively, I've never run into an issue where printing around that 60 millimeters a second mark on a direct drive isn't uh, able to operate correctly because it's just whipping around too quickly. Like it's the speeds I print at make it where having that extra weight, even if it's a full size stepper motor has never been problematic to me. This has been my experience using both the Bowden and the direct drive system over the past six years. I hope that for someone that is looking and seeing these terms like Bowden and direct drive and trying to figure out, oh, what do I need? This gives them a better understanding. And Based off many of the people I've spoken with over the years getting into 3D printing, I can honestly say for most of these people, they could go either way. The, the extrusion system really doesn't matter. There's very specific situations that actually require you to have one type of extruder over the other. Typically the things that are more important than the Bowden versus direct drive are things like, does it have hardened steel gears? Does it have one gear or is it dual geared? So 
those things are actually, uh, in my opinion, more important than whether it's a Bowden or a direct drive. But I'd love to know in the comments down below what your preference is. Are you team Bowden? Are you team direct drive? Or do you not care as long as you've got a 3D printer that can get the job done? Um, I hope that this video was useful. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or if there's something you feel I didn't cover. I, as I mentioned always, I try to be as thorough as possible by sharing my experience and also doing my own research. But there, if there's anything that you feel like I missed or that you have a question on, please let me know again in the comments down below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description to the Patreon. The Discord is officially up. I have added the $5 tier to the Discord, so I'm really excited as there are uh, a few more people starting to populate the Discord. I'm really hoping that over 2021, the Discord will continue to grow and we will have um, some great conversations over there. So. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. A huge thank you to all of my existing Patreons. You guys are absolutely amazing. I really appreciate you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video, and I'm out. Peace, guys.